Welcome back. Time now to talk markets. We have Dan Bossy as well as Jim McCormick joining us this weekend. Jim, as we saw last week on Crop Tour, disease pressure, it is a problem across portions of the Corn Belt. And now we have dryness concerns creeping in. Do you think this corn crop is going backwards in terms of yield? It definitely feels like it's going backwards. Time when we talk to our clients, which we have some all across the country, they are really concerned about it. Probably a little bit more in the east and the west, where we've seen some of the driest conditions that, you know in 130 years in parts of Ohio. Is it a disaster? No, um, but uh, it, it's definitely taking the top end off the crop. Dan, do you agree with that? I mean, I know you have a national estimate. You've been talking to a lot of producers. You did your own crop tour. Do you feel like this crop is going backwards? Yeah, it, I think it is, Ty. I think it's going backwards, but maybe not to the degree that the farmer would like. We dropped our yield estimate from 189.2 to 187.1, so we're down a skosh from USDA, but this is still a big crop. And some of the early yield data we're getting out of Kentucky, Missouri, and Kansas is above what expectations were. So when you think about this crop, you know, southern rust is a bad disease if you get it in the blister or early milk stage but when it happens at dent you're looking at yield losses of zero to four percent so let's hope that farmers applied one application of fungicide and that kept them until the crop got in the dent i'm hoping that that's going to limit yield losses going forward well jim last week pro farmer released a national yield estimate based off of what they saw on crop tour and other factors of just shy of 183 bushels per acre. That's under USDA's current 188.8. But does USDA actually have a tendency to increase or decrease yield in the September report that we have coming up? Well, I think in, in general time, the, they, they tend to grow a little bit bigger. I mean, look at last year's analog year. The crop was big in uh, August. It got bigger in September, then again in October before they started revis revising it down. So it would not be a surprise that they will go bigger, but there's going to be a lot of pushback, like Dan said, from the disease pressure. So uh, I think there's going to be a lot of wide range on the estimate for the September WASI when it's all said. Yeah, Dan, I mean, we don't have pre-report estimates yet, but would you be surprised if USDA actually raises their yield next month? I, I wouldn't because even on your tour, time, it showed us record ear counts and record pod counts. Those are the two most important ingredients for the September report. Now, in October, we'll have more to know about pod weights and ear weights. But for September, I'm kind of expecting that USDA is going to be a few bushels, if you will, from the August estimate. It's the October report, which will determine how big is big. Jim, we just heard from USDA meteorologist Brad Rippey. We are talking about one of the driest Augusts on record for some areas, especially the Eastern Corn Belt. Jim, how concerned are you about the dryness then and the impact on the soybean yields specifically? I think it's a problem. I think, you know, history says when you don't have a, you know, you have a dry August, you tend to lose up to a bushel plus um, yield time. But I think the real problem is the demand from China. Uh, you know, the fact of the matter is if we lost the bushel of beans, I don't think it's going to be a disaster because right now without these China purchases coming in and they are, you know, you know, they still have about one bean for this upcoming fall. That demand, lost demand is going to be more than what we might lose in lost bushels, unfortunately. Dan, I know we, we talked about it during crop tour last week, but is there any sign, any sign at all that China is going to step up and buy U.S. soybeans? Boy, I'm worried about a time because this week the Chinese indicated that they were going to be auctioning off reserve soybeans. Uh, the, the first auction will be this week and then continuing going forward. That's a sign for me that the Chinese are realistic about this uh, this absence of U.S. demand going forward. So, you know, um, I think if we go into the middle or latter part of September, we've lost all of October. And to Jim's point, that becomes very serious in terms of U.S. soybean exports, maybe to the tune of two to three hundred million bushels. So I'm more concerned about China than I am about the bushel yield relative to dryness in August. But Dan, is the Chinese government still instructing importers to not buy U.S. soybeans by all indications on your part? Yes, by my, by my uh, clients in China, they are still being told crush and otherwise not to buy U.S. soybeans. They are still buying Brazilian soybeans uh, for October, November. China's now bought enough soybeans for October that they're 90% covered on their import needs, 20% for November, and they're paying prices of 50 to 70 cents higher on a landed basis for both of those months. So to my knowledge, China's still looking at using not buying soybeans as a trade lever going forward in these negotiations. Is China the only hope for soybean prices? That's what we're going to ask Jim when we come back.